Daf Yomi, Tractate Bhava Basra, page 25a, top of the page the word Shose Oso Glal. He turns it into manure. In other words, the chaff acts like manure, and an excessive amount of manure damages the seeds. And the new Mishnah. We're starting a new Mishnah. Marhikin es Hanavelos Vesakvaros es Aborsukim in ear, etc. Chemishim Ama. One must distance animal carcasses and graves and a tannery, a place where hides are processed, 50 cubits from the city. One may establish a tannery only on the east side of the city because winds usually blow from the west and foul smells would therefore be blown away from the residential area. Rabbi Akiva says one may establish a tannery on any side of the city except for the west as the winds blowing from that direction will bring the odors into the city. And one must distance it 50 cubits from the city. One must distance from vegetables, water in which flax is seeped, because this water ruins them. And likewise, one must distance leeks from onions and mustard from bees. And Rabbi Yossi permits one not to do so in the case of mustard. Talmud, the Gemara says, a dilemma was raised before the sages with regard to, with regard to what case is Rabbi Akiva speaking. Did he mean that one may establish a tannery on any side of a city, and one may even place the tannery close to the city, except for the west side, where one must establish it at a distance of 50 cubits? Or perhaps he meant that one may establish a tannery on any side and distance it 50 cubits except for the west side, where one may not establish a tannery at all. The Gemara cites the proof come in here as it is taught in a price. Rabbi Kiva says that one may establish a tannery on any side of the city and distance it 50 cubits except for the west side, where one may not establish a tannery at all, because the western wind is frequent. With regard to the last statement of, of the Brayta, Rava said to Rav Nachman, what does frequent mean in this context? If we say it means frequent among the winds, In other words, this wind blows all the time. That is difficult. But doesn't Rav Hanan bar Abba say that Rav Rav says four winds blow every day from different directions and the northern wind blows with each of the other three as if this were not so. In other words, if it did not blow, the world would not exist for even one hour. As the northern wind is pleasant, and tempers the bitter effects of the other winds. And the southern wind is harsher than all of them, and were it not for the angel named Ben Netz, Ben Netz, I wonder what the gematria of that is. Ben Netz. 192. Apash is 323. Okay. Shema Mida. Mechaberes Olam. Machreves Es Olam. Shemar. Hami Bin Ascha Yaver Nets. Your first kind of Timon. Okay. Interesting. They extrapolate his name from a verse. 
The angel named Ben Ness, one who stops it from blowing even harder, you would destroy the world. As if stated, does the hawk soar by your wisdom and stretch your wings toward the south? Job thirty nine twenty six. This indicates that the northern wind is the most constant, not the western wind. Rather, what is the meaning of frequent? It means frequent with the divine presence. In other words, the divine presence is found on the western side, and therefore it is inappropriate to set up a tannery there with its foul odors. As Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi says, Come and let us be grateful to our ancestors who revealed to us the place of prayer as it is written, and the hosts of heaven bow down to you. Nehemiah 9 6. Since the celestial bodies move from east to west, they bow in that direction, which indicates that the divine presence is in the west. Maskifla Rahabalyakoiv, Rahabalyakov objects to this, but perhaps the celestial bodies are like a servant who receives a gift from his master and walks backward while bowing. If so, the divine presence is in the east and the celestial bodies are moving backward. The Gomorrah comments, indeed, this is difficult. In other words, the verse does not provide a definitive proof. The Gomorrah comments, um, and Rabbi Yoshaya holds, that the divine presence is found in every place. As Rabbi Yoshaya says, what is the meaning of that which is written? You are the Lord, even you alone. You have made heaven. You preserve them all alive. And the hosts of heaven bow down to you in Hemiah 9 6. This indicates that your messengers are not like the messengers of flesh and blood. The messengers of flesh and blood return to the place from where they were sent to report on their mission. But your messengers return. A report on their mission from the very same place to which they are sent. As it is stated, can you send forth lightning, lightnings that they may go out and say to you, here we are, Job 38, 35. The verse does not state they will come and say, in other words, they do not return to their point of departure, but they may go out and say, which teaches and that the divine presence is found in every place. The Gemara comments, and Rabbi Ishmael too holds that the divine presence is in every place. As one of the sages in the school of Rabbi Ishmael taught, from where is it derived that the divine presence is in every place, as it is stated? And behold, the angel who spoke with me went forth. And another, another angel went out to meet him, Zechariah 2, 7. Although both angels were coming from the Divine Presence, the verse does not state after him, but to meet him, which teaches that, that the Divine Presence is in every place. And therefore the angels depart from their missions from every place. And Rav Sheshet too holds that the Divine Presence is in every place, as Rav Sheshet said, servant. Set me facing any direction and pray except for the east. Roshesha, who was blind, required the assistance of his aid to prepare for prayer. He explained to his servant, And the reason I do not wish to face east is not because it does not contain the divine presence, but because the heretics instruct people to pray in that direction. I'm not sure. We all pray to the East these days. Are we all heretics? I don't know. Rabbi Abahu says the divine presence is in the West. As Rabbi Abahu says, what is the meaning of Oriah? Which is a name for the West. It means the heir of God or, or Aviria. It's really Oriah. Aviria. Oriya is like Aviria. In other words, this is the place of the divine presence. Amar of Yehuda. The Gemara cites a statement uh, connected to the four winds. Yehuda said, 
What is the meaning of, of that which is written? My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as a small rain upon the tender growth, and as the sh- and as the showers upon the herb. Deuteronomy thirty two two. My doctrine shall drop, Yarov, as the rain. This is the western wind, which. comes from the back of Orpo, the world, as the west is also referred to as the back. My speech shall distill as a dew. This is the northern wind, which brings dry air that reduces the rain and grain and thereby devalues gold. When grain crops are reduced their price appreciates, and con- and consequently their, the value of gold decreases. And in addition, it says, you who lavish gold out of the bag. Isaiah 46, verse 6. As the, the small rain upon the tender growth, this is the eastern wind that rages through the entire world like a demon when it blows strongly. And as the, sh- the showers upon the herb, this is the southern wind, which raises showers and causes herbs to grow. Tanya, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Ola. It was Tanya Bryson that, that Rabbi Eliezer says, the world, and to be continued.